What a year Meghalaya has had. This was supposed to be the year the state and Northeast favorite tourist destination recovered completely from the pandemic, get back on its feet and the only fight we had expected was on the political front. Sadly, this year the state has seen so many protests for so many reasons and no, none of them has a positive outlook. I am Kalyan Deb and in this week of Decoded, we look once again at what is going on in Meghalaya. But this time, I doubt I can blame the Meghalaya government directly. Or can I? We will see. Assume for months. The village of Assam in the 75th Independence Day. Last week, due to some technical and personal limitations, we were unable to do our weekly episode of Decoded. But the week before that, what was our subject? Yes, you guessed it right, Meghalaya. In that video, we talked about how the state was in for a long, uncomfortable winter due to the never-ending political chicanery, hard economic times and a crippling education system. But this week's events caught everyone by surprise. Now, at the outset, we would like to make it clear that the Assam-Meghalaya border while having its share of incidents, had not seen the kind of troubles, in the recent times at least, like those witnessed at the Mizoram border in the run-up to the deadly day of July 26, 2021. But then, it was not an island of calm either. Remember a few months ago when both CMs were posing for pictures and congratulating each other and themselves for solving the border issue? That was just one part of the border issues. And there too, as our various stories have shown, people are far from happy with the outcome. Assamese people are angry at Satras going to Meghalaya, for example. But the incident at Mukro took place on the Karbianglong, West Jentia Hill side, which is the part of the second phase of the border talks. What happened on November 22? We have documented that extensively and please click on the links in the description to understand the story in details. Suffice it to say, it was a mistake of epic proportions by the Assam security forces. Chasing an alleged timber smuggler 12 kilometers inside Meghalaya? Check. Picking up Meghalaya residents at a whim and with no probable cause? Check. Taking them back to Assam and not informing their Meghalaya counterparts? Check. Shooting at civilians who were visibly angry at their actions? Check. In short, they messed up big time. So much so that even Himanta Biswasarma, who otherwise does not mind police encountering alleged criminals, had to accept that the cops should have exercised restraint. You know, things are serious when even Chief Minister Sharma wants cops to exercise restraint. Within hours of the Mukro killings, it became clear that this was likely to blow into an Assam versus Meghalaya issue, despite both state governments maintaining it was not. Media, especially Assam media, went into overdrive talking about sealed borders attacks on Assamese folks and an internet ban. Of course, only one of them was correct. The Meghalaya government had banned phone internet, but no border had been sealed. They were only put on alert. In fact, it was the Assam government, or more specifically Assam police, which was stationed at the border, advising people, especially Assamese people, not to travel to Meghalaya. And no sooner, one Assamese driver was almost lynched by irate locals in Meghalaya. Again, you can hear his story in the link in the description. But the protests did not end there. Two days ago, after a candlelight vigil, once again, anti-social elements in Shillong wasted no time in destroying public property, attacking police and even threatening non-locals, according to some reports. Thankfully, no one lost their lives and things came under control quickly. As we record this, Meghalaya still does not have mobile internet. At times, despite being unbiased as journalists, we cannot help but feel a little sad for Conrad Sangma. The man has not had one easy day this year. From protests to more protests to the fiasco around Bernard Marak and an opposition reinvigorated by Mukul Sangma, Conrad is simply drowning in problems. And the Mukro killings are the latest. Some expected him to go all guns blazing at the Assam police and the Assam government in light of what happened. But the fact that he has gone to meet Home Minister Amit Shah 
who is also meeting Sangma's Assam counterpart, shows that he is more than willing to talk it out instead of flaring up the situation. Conrad knows the BJP may be a tough ally, but after what happened with Bernard Marak, Sangma does not want a full-on attack by the BJP with just a few months to go. The TMC, however, wouldn't care two hoots about what Conrad Sangma is feeling. Boo-hoo, they say. Mukul Sangma wasted no time in attacking Conrad. Abhishek Banerjee said the killings showed Conrad's ineptitude and TMC spokesperson Saket Gokhale had the NHRC on the hotline before you could say, what a surprise. The TMC, which has been vocal in its opposition to the border talks and deals, sees this as a perfect opportunity to further push the Conrad government into a corner. They are more than aware that as of now, few things are going right for Conrad. We have heard that one must not do politics on dead bodies. But then, who are we kidding? At last, one more point we would like to mention. The Meghalaya Civil Society, especially KAM Meghalaya and the TUR, have time and again called out those who resort to vandalism and pointed out that such acts benefit no one. We too hope that better sense prevails and that justice for the victims and not mindless destruction of public property become the rallying point for people in both Assam and Meghalaya. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.